I've got something that's not new, but something I'm starting to use today to share with you that I think could be a game changer for staying in touch with your leads and your database. And in Wanderings In, we are going to be dining out once upon a time in Hollywood. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 104. Jan O'Brien, what's on the agenda today? Well, I am going to talk about send out cards. I've heard about send out cards for years. I now have several people using them and I have been convinced, but it's like anything. So I'm going to talk through why I'm excited about using them in my business uh, for, for generating real estate leads, following up with that, and also as a broker. Uh, but like anything, Matt, it requires a commitment to using the tool. Of course. But I want to share how I've been impressed with being on the receiving end of send out cards. So I'm all in for this in 2020. And that's Good. what I'm going to talk about. And um, I don't know, Hollywood, you're going to talk about some cool places yeah, to eat in Hollywood? Yeah, here's the deal. It's Oscar time, right? Um, uh, Sweet Pea and I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the movie with, ah. Brad, uh, with Brad Pitt and Leo uh, last weekend. It was brilliantly done because it was set, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, and they uh, really recreated, uh, the, well, really all of Southern California, but Hollywood in particular, uh, to really make it feel like you were back at the time. So there's a bunch of restaurants and say, you know, they did a lot of location shooting. Uh, so we're going to just tour a couple of places that are still alive and open today that you can go and visit. But before we even start talking about that, you ready for the Super Bowl on Sunday? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as into it right now for some reason. I don't know, but I, I think it'd be a good, hopefully you always hope it's a good game. Do you, right. do you even watch the Super Bowl, Matt? You know, you know, I'm not a big Super Bowl Well, what about the 49ers? Is but, that one? Of you? I was always a Raiders fan. Come on, I'm an East Bay boy. Raiders. That's right. So, but here's the thing, you know, you, whether or not you're going to watch the game or not, the commercials, the commercials are, uh, okay. Have you seen any of the stuff already? Right. No, no, I haven't even looked at any of the okay. hype on the commercials. All right. I have watched one of them. I, ha I was watching Morning Joe the other day, and they got to talking about the, the um, Hyundai Sonata commercial. Oh, and now, oh my God, the Boston commercial? Oh, holy crap. It is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I swear to God, I've that. watched it a hundred times. I, that is hilarious. It's but got Smart with... Pack. <laughs> it's got Smart Pack. <laughs> All right, we have to put a link to that Hyundai oh, Boston. I'm with you. Don't worry. Best about commercial that. ever. It really, it, seriously, <laughs> it, it really is. Chris, don't be a smarty pants. <laughs> but what's best is they're three actors doing the Boston accent, right? They're three well-known actors, and I'm like the one lady that's on uh, Saturday yeah, Rachel, Night Live. Rachel Dratch, yeah. And it's it's got Smart Pack! <laughs> that's awesome! Oh my god. Okay. Did, you grab it? Did you pack it in the harbor? I packed it and unpacked it. You unpacked what's it? going on? It's got Smart Pack! Oh my god. It's packing itself! Yeah, yeah I, pop, I popped over here, I popped over there. You're not gonna yeah, pass awesome. it. You're not gonna get in there. Uh, Chris, don't be a smarty pants. <laughs> you have watched it numerous times. Oh my times. god, it is so funny. All right, okay, so apparently that is going to be on the Super Bowl. That's going to be a hit. I already am laughing because okay, I watched I, that I, a couple times. I went times. through, you know, because a lot of they, you know, really they, they tell you, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I've looked at a lot of them, but I, I, I'm, I, I am going to be hard pressed to find one better than that because that one is pee your pants funny. <laughs> All right, so one reason to watch the Super Bowl, according to Matt pack. Emerson. Is it's to watch car. is to watch the commercials. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> in the harbor, packed it. The garden, packed it. Packed it. packed it. Packed it and unpacked it. You unpacked it. Wow, you could do the commercial. Oh my god, so good. Uh, all right, let's let's dive into episode one hundred and four of the WBNL podcast. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, so I want to talk about send-out cards. So you got a chance to take a look at that 
that back end and helping me set it up. What, what were your thoughts initially on, on send out cards? Well, like any new program you go into, it's like going down the rabbit hole, right? There's so many options in there, it, 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 things that are already in there templated, but you can build your own stuff. So, I mean, it's really unlimited uh, use out of that. I mean, not only just with the cards, but what you were showing me is, you know, that you can send gifts and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's a great tool, great tool for realtors. Oh my God. So Fantastic. for some of you listening, you've probably heard of this before, but if you haven't, just a quick overview of what Send Out Cards is. It's been around for years. It's actually marketed as an affiliate type program. So there's actually a business opportunity if you really are into it and then you introduce other people to it. You can, you know, obviously generate some revenue. But I really want to talk more about, I'm not even signed up that way because I got in, I, I was more, I have a couple agents in our company who really are, have impressed me with using this. And I, and I just want to share why I think it's a great idea right off the bat. It, it allows you to send cards that are already beautifully designed, you know, professionally designed for everything, thank yous and inv invitations. I'll get into how I think you can use it in a second. But the coolest part is to design your own. So if you are friends with people in your database, as an example, uh, it could for friends and family either. This could be this obviously not just used for business. You can right. send a personalized heartfelt card uh, because people post things on their Facebook. So I'll give you the example of, of what uh, Rita Eileen, uh, who is in our company, who got kind of refreshed her business and got back into using send out cards and really generated a bunch of business just by focusing on just this with her database. I get that. And so what happened is she sent me a couple of them. So I get a card in the mail that has a picture and I have it, I, sh I, I should grab it actually and show it on this video. Can we pause for a second so I can get it? I'll we just do, do the commercial over and over again. Huh? You'll do the, here, I have yeah. it right here. Ah, can't, can't pack the car there. Don't be a, Chris, don't be a smarty pants. Actually, I don't even have to pause. I just want to point out why I think this is so powerful is she sent me a postcard. And it's a picture of my sisters when I was in Florida in May 2019. It says O'Brien's Sisters Week, Carrie, Jan, Lorene, and Tarpon Springs. Now, why I have this over here in my office is that no one prints out pictures anymore. Everything's posted That's on right. Facebook. No one goes, well, this is what this allows you to do. I mean, I have a picture of my sisters that I will probably put in a frame, but I just keep it out. I have another one that she sent me. So think about that for a second. You have, and this is like a good old Brian Buffini, send a personal note. Well, this is sure. a personal note with a personal touch that is uh, something that somebody's probably not going to throw out. So this right. is a postcard type. You could do a normal you know, card that opens and you have the panels to put all the information on it. So that's that's it. it that's really what it is. It's a, an a ability to send out a card on the spot, on the fly. You can do a heartfelt card that's just more personal touch of one to one person. They even have things like a systems card. So you could upload your database and, and, and have everybody's birthdays and queue it up that this list, every time there's a birthday, this birthday card with, that you've personalized gets mailed right. out from the system. And so, the quality, quality looks nice too. Yeah, it's great. You're not, yeah. you are not um, mailing these. You're the, the, you're basically building it and either doing it one off or putting them in as a system and sending them out. You can do scheduled sends for holidays. Uh, you can design your own, as I said. And then, as we mentioned, there's gifts in there. So if you, one of the things you do is to thank a referral, somebody refers you, you could go in and say, thank you so much. I appreciate your referral. Send them a gift card. They have a Starbucks gift card, Amazon gift cards in there. You could, they have brownies and cookies and yeah, small little gifts, uh, mugs, things like that. So it's a no-brainer. I'll go through what the options are, and in the show notes, uh, I have a link back to their site, and I put a graphic of the things I'll talk about here in a second that are just, you don't even have to sign up for a, a package. You can just try it at $0 a month, no, no money. But obviously, the, if you start get paying for the subscription, the cost of the card and the mailing goes down. That's, right. that's the whole deal. So how do you use it with your database? Well, birthdays. I just mentioned birthdays. You could do home anniversaries to thank you for the referral idea. You could do life events. So when somebody, you're friends with somebody on Facebook because they've been your past client too, and something happens, there's a birth, or uh, somebody goes off to college, or they just post something like they're on vacation. Yeah, okay? that's and cool. All of a sudden in the mail for no reason at all, you're sending something that means something to them. And then the back panel of your card, it could just have it's from you, your contact information, and it's just really what they call it, a heartfelt card. 
Uh, why is that powerful? Because people don't get these things. Nobody no. gets anything cool in the mail anymore. It's just bills and circulars and stuff you throw in the trash. I mean, putting, um, adding pictures is really brilliant. Like you could, ha you know, that that classic closing picture that you a lot of times yeah. take for testimonials, send that to them. That would be something they would never forget or never throw Absolutely. away. Absolutely. Right? So, yeah. so you find opportunities to take a picture in front of their house, get right. in your keys, and you send that. And here, what, they're not going to throw that away. That's mm -hmm. going to be what. Here's our new house. That's right. So you could do things like congratulations on the home purchase or sale, um, invitations if you do a client party. You could design a, a thing and send it all out. And here's all the information about your client event and obviously holidays and things to this effect. But you can also use it for lead follow-up. So I have another agent, Victor, who was, he's, he's like a super user of this. In fact, they just had their convention send out cards and he was one of the guys that people uh, wanted to talk to because he, he does so well with this, uh, getting people to come on board with it because he talks to other businesses, but he uses it for his own business. He has a couple of businesses, real estate. He sells solar, his name's Victor. And uh, Victor, I was recruiting Victor and I got, I do my interview with Victor and I opened the mail that day and we had scheduled an appointment. He had requested to be my friend on Facebook. I was, I didn't know at this time that he was a send out card guy. He, I said, sure, I want to be his friend. I'm trying to get him to join our company. So right. we connected on Facebook. The day that I interview him, he has this beautiful card. He took some pictures from my Facebook saying, I really look forward to meeting you. Um, so here he is, a recruit, kind of wowing me with that. Right, yeah. And then I hire him. He goes, hey, let's take a picture uh, uh, out in front of our sign. A couple days later, I get this, I'm so excited to join the team. Thank you. Looking forward to a great 2020. Uh, it's still in my office. Uh, and, you know, so, so, and he just, now why this guy is so successful? And this is the key. He uses this as his main thing. So he is disciplined to look for opportunities right. every day to go, let me get a send out card. Now you need to have people's addresses, their business addresses, their home addresses to make this work because it's a card getting going to their mail. So you have to make sure that you're collecting people's, you have that generally for your clients, uh, but you need to do that. For lead, so you can also use it for lead follow-up. He uses it for lead follow-up. He meets somebody at an open house. He gets all their contact information. He even tries to friend them on Facebook because he just comes across like, you know, let's just connect, right? And sure. then, he, then he sends kind of a heartfelt thank you and, and then he starts a series of staying in touch and that's the other thing you can do with these cards. You can set up a, a, a scheduled series of, of events to touch them or introduce yourself if, you, if it's a lead that maybe you did get their contact information. Maybe they want to know what the value of their house is, so now you have their their home address, so you send them a card. Right? You can also add them to your holidays and so forth. I mean, just think um, about it. We always talk about you know doing you know really planning out your open house and putting on the you know the event. Right? You could take pictures of the house, put information about it, and you could mail that out as an invitation. I mean, there's so many uses for it. It's amazing. Yeah, if you're if you're a team leader or a broker, uh, obviously you can use it for retention and and uh, recognizing your agents' birthdays and their anniversaries and their milestones. Welcome them to the team. These are all things all right. we're going to be doing with it uh, as we now become power users of send out cards once again can't add any more things to our toolkit because that's the problem you got to choose your weapons i say you choose choose the things believe in what they're going to do for you and be committed to it and you'll see the results i don't care what it is you know what is the thing you're going to do but i just happen to think this is easy and here's what i love about it zero you can start with zero and it, it costs like 275 to send a system card uh, or rather a heartfelt card uh, and you're paying retail price on the gifts. And then if you just start at $17 a month, it goes down to two twenty-five. dollars You get 15% discount on gifts, things like that. $37 a month is the program we're on right now. This lets you have 30 heartfelt card sends, and all you have to do is pay the postage. So you're paying like 55 cents for postage, $37 a month. It would cost you more to go get a card at the store. Sure. Absolutely I mean, it would. Uh, even if you just, you know, if you want it customized and all that, and then if you do, if you're a power user and you do a ton, you can go up to 97 a month and you get unlimited heartfelt, you know, you'll have to go look at all the details. Plus they have add on packages and other things that you can uh, get. If you're going to really use it for your database, there's some cost effective ways to pay one time and have 300 cents, et cetera. So go check it out in our show notes. It's uh, send out cards. Uh, I think this can be something that if you're vigilant to stopping and if you, you know, instead of sending the personal note, you can send a personal note with a lot more power, especially if you can have really some cool photos and there's already some great stuff in there for, yeah, you really don't have nice. to design your own car, but you want to have a branded thing that you can send and it's cost effective. I say do it. Wicked smart. Wicked.
Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the lights surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going to the Oscars. Jan O'Brien, Oscars, February 9th. Have you watched any of the Oscar Best Picture nominated movies? Uh, can you name some of them? I, I can name them all. Let's okay. just go through the list. There's right, Ford versus Ferrari. No, but I want to see it. Okay, The Irishman. Yes. Did you watch it? Well, what would you think? I loved it. Yeah, we are about, well, we're about an hour in. The movie's three and a half hours long, right? So we're about an hour in. They, he, Hoffa just kind of came in the picture. So we're going to watch that <laughs> over really the weekend. really good. I'm really enjoying it so far. The just those, First of all, those guys are amazing. And what they've done to age them and de-age them is amazing as well. But I've read a lot about that when doing kind of some research for the, the podcast. You know, they the three of those guys went in and actually had coaching on how to walk and to act younger isn't wow. that funny that's wow. funny right because that's your awesome. body changes right yeah. your posture everything changes as you get older anyway it's fascinating it's kind of i mean i i found myself kind of mesmerized and kind of looking at that which was a little distracting but what a great film oh it's okay. scorsese and it's all those oh. great actors come on and for crying Can't out loud bad. yeah exactly ray romano he's awesome as the lawyer ray. Ray, i know great. it's fantastic uh so irishman ford first of ferrari jojo rabbit did you no. see that one fantastic that I think might be my favorite. Uh, the Joker? Yes. Uh, did you like it? I didn't see it. Uh, it was really... Joaquin Phoenix was brilliant. Yeah. It was a very disturbing movie. I know. It's getting a lot of buzz. Uh, <laughs> Little Women? Uh, no. Nope. A Marriage Story, which I heard... I've was... started to watch that a couple times because you can get it on streaming now. Right. So. Yeah, Fantastic, I should watch but, that. But depressing, I've heard, yeah. uh, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, 1917, which I think is getting... Oh, uh, it's just out now. Yeah, yeah I want to yeah. go see that. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which we are no. going to talk about today, fantastic film, and Parasite. Uh, and no, oh my lord, that. what a great film, Parasite is. That's actually up for Best Picture and Best Foreign Film. Fan. Just one in the Screen Actors, or what did it win? Yeah, Parasite. I, I, yeah, one. I think so. Yeah. I believe so. Fan, fantastic. So there's a you know, there's a lot of great films nominated. And uh, today we are going to one of my favorite parts about films, right, is the locations they actually shoot at and what they use for, you know, to to take the place of other locations and that kind of stuff. In Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they are in Hollywood and they go to real life Hollywood locations for the most part. And there are four or five little restaurants that they, uh, they have filmed in and around uh, for that film that are in Hollywood today. And if you are, if you live in the Hollywood area or you're visiting the Hollywood area, these are, these are the, you know, the, the, the must-go-to places uh, from that film that they filmed. First of all, uh, the the most classic one and probably the most famous uh, restaurant in Hollywood is Musso and Frank Grill right there on Hollywood Boulevard. You ever, do you ever eaten anywhere in Hollywood in any of the, any of the famous mm, restaurants? No. Probably not. Maybe yeah. you won if you, when you go through this list. I Musso might and Frank is, the, is awesome. It's been around, well, now 101 years. It opened in 1919 originally, and uh, uh, it's just a classic classic Hollywood restaurant. Best martinis in the world. You know, there's a, a there's a show on Netflix uh, called The Kaminsky Method. You ever seen that? With uh, Michael no, Douglas? I started yeah. to watch it. Yeah. And Alan Arkin. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a funny show, but they go to Musso and Frank all the time. And one of the things that's kind of, uh, I think, classic about Musso and Frank, they have waiters that have been there for many, many, many years. Okay. Uh, like many, many, many years. They uh, really do. Yeah. They really do, because my Sweepy and I have experienced this at more than one occasion. What's kind of funny, you know, when the, the, what seems to be a 150-year-old man coming up in his red <laughs> coat, right, and the martini, there, there's the funniest scenes in Musu and or in, um, Kaminsky, Kaminsky Method uh, where he, the waiter's coming up with a tray of drinks, and, you know, he's old, right? And the drinks are all <laughs> rocking on the tray, and he sets it down on the table and it takes forever. It's, it's, you know, I don't want to, believe me. 
I, I'm not, this is not ageist that I'm talking about, but it's funny, right? Anyway, Moose and Frank's, great restaurant, a lot of history. All of the restaurants and uh, locations we're talking about today, by the way, are going to be over in the show notes. So you can learn a little bit more, learn their locations uh, and go is check them out. Is it hard to get in? Is it like one of those places you need a I reservation? It can be. I mean, I think on busy, on the weekend nights, I mean, you know, like when you, before, uh, we used to always go there before we went to the theater, like go to the Pantages or something, because you could just walk down the street and there you were. It was you park once and have a, have a, what feels like a Hollywood dining experience. So uh, a lot of fun and classic and it'll be there uh, downtown. There's Cicada restaurant and club. It's kind of a nightclub in the film. Uh, it was at, used as a location of uh, actually over in Europe. I believe it was in Rome where uh, he flew off to do some spaghetti Westerns over in, uh, in Italy and they use this as a, a location. So it wasn't, they were using it as the actual location, but a on location location, but it's just a cool old, uh, you know, kind of a nightclub uh, downtown. Check it out. The uh, information is going to be over in the show notes that during the towards the end of the film, you know, the film is uh, about an actor, his stunt double their antics and the trials and tribulations of their life. And they happen to live in the Hollywood Hills next to Roman Polanski, Sharon Tate, and then the whole Manson thing gets brought mm. into the whole thing. It's fat. It's really an interesting little uh, web of, uh, you know, kind of what went on in that time. And, you know, it's a fairy tale, right? So, but anyway, towards the end of the film, when it's kind of getting to that climactic point, when something was going to happen between the Mansons and all of the characters, uh, there's, Two little restaurants that are Mexican restaurants that the characters are in. Their characters are in. There's Casa Vega, which is actually out in the the valley. Uh, it's been around forever. Has roots actually in downtown Los Angeles, down on Olivera Street. And um, uh, El Coyote Restaurant, which is a just a classic uh, restaurant on Beverly Boulevard in Hollywood. Uh, been around. Both of them have been around for a, a long time. They have, I would say, more authentic Mexican food than like going to El Torito or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like the greatest restaurants in the world but once again these old type of restaurants are just they're fun to be in anyway because there's history there and there's a, and El Coyote's been in a, a, a trillion different restaurants you know over over the years uh the last one that I uh wanted to chat I, actually they, don't, they didn't really even use this as a location in the film but when you're what's so cool about the way they did this movie is how the and I don't even know obviously with uh CGI and, and just special effects uh, that they were using. They'd be driving down Hollywood Boulevard. And I, I uh, moved down to Hollywood back in the early uh, 80s, which was well after this. But go when they would take those shots down Hollywood Boulevard, you I would see things that I remember seeing way back when, right? And which are long gone now. And uh, how so they I'm, created how these things, that? it's amazing. Well, I, I heard it. It's funny. There's a couple scenes. There used to be a Pussycat Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And I forget what it is now. Uh, it, it might even be a store now. But anyway, I, I was reading about this, and they actually went and and recreated part of that facade in in real life, not just wow. you know CGI over it, but recreated that marquee and stuff. And I think they did that with a couple of different locations. And you know, a lot of it was just computer generated stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's driving down Hollywood Boulevard. I think this was Brad Pitt. Actually, he drives by the Frolic Room, and the Frolic Room is a classic kind of dive bar. It's near the Pantages Theater, and um, it's just got this really cool neon uh, sign in front. It's it's a small place. It's still there. I've been there a couple times. You know, years back, uh, the Paramount Theater years ago. I I think Howard Hughes had, uh, not Paramount, Pantages, uh, had purchased that. And the Oscars were actually held at the uh, the theater a couple of years there. And the Frolic Room was a place that, like, you know, they would go to their little parties and there would, you know, be get the little overflow of some of the actors there. So there's just so, you know, anything in Hollywood is going to have your your Oscar uh, connection at some point or something with a location in a film. But sure. check, check out those, uh, you know three or four, however many I said there are places next time you're in Hollywood and and go see Once Upon a Time in, uh, uh, in Hollywood. Uh, by the way, not sponsored by that film, uh, but it, it's a great go film. Go see it and then go check out those locations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or or go check out those locations and see the movie and you're like, hey, I, ate there. I was there. I, I had a pop there, but definitely Moose and Franks, check that out. And next week, we're going to continue our, our, uh, our Oscar conversation with some tips and tricks and things you can talk to to wow and impress your friends if you're going to an Oscar party. So okay. pick it up next week. Very good. Well, that's a wrap for episode 104 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet all of our show notes over WBNLpodcast.com. 
Com. Jana Brand Send Out Cards is a great tool. And once you get used to the system and you go down the rabbit hole of building things and doing all that, I think it is something that everybody should put into your business. Well, we'll be able to, sorry, we'll be able to report on that uh, in months to come and we'll give you the feedback as we commit to using it uh, in business and in our both our business, all our businesses, if you will and see if we get the kind of response. I just know that people that use it and use it consistently, they can they can quantitate how much business they get from it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love it. And Oscars, I'm looking forward to seeing more than the two. Uh, how many are nominated? Six, seven? I think seven? there's eight nominated. Yeah, there's always a it's lot, right? between five, five and 10. So yeah. based on, before we close out, based on what's left on that what, and I was going to have time to see two or three before the Oscars. What would you recommend? Go see Jojo Rabbit. Okay. Uh, that definitely. That, and well, and see, obviously and, and once the upon a time. Well, once yeah. I mean, really, Parasite, fantastic. I think that's that's going to. There's going to be a lot of talk about that just because it's nominated in both categories and it's really, really good. Subtitles, of course, because it's foreign film, but it's really good. But Jojo Rabbit, I really that I've seen so far is my favorite. Okay, love it. That looks very quirky. I like those kind of movies. It, it is, but it's surprisingly not as quirky as you think it would be. Okay. That, it was uh, so I won't give any more away. But it, okay. it, 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 I, I let me just put it this way: I didn't know what to expect, and I was yeah. kind of blown, I was blown away. So I just saw uh, previews from some of the award things, and that young actor he did, he did a great oh, job. He's yeah. phenomenal, and you know, Scar Joe can do no wrong. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. So uh, everybody, that is that, that's a wrap, right, for 104, and we'll that's see a wrap you next for week. We'll see you next week. And, and, and don't forget, you know, if you got some app pack, pack the car. <laughs> go watch that. Go watch that commercial if you haven't seen it. It's in the New best commercial ever. You can't pack that car here. <laughs> Bye-bye.